Warhammer Fest is still a thing, and we've got a bunch more stuff to look at, not least the AOS stuff, including Warcry, all the same thing. We're going to take a look at that right now. Don't worry, I'm not going to forget about the Horus Heresy or the Old World stuff, or was there something else? There might have been something else that I can't remember that is also being shown off today. It's just... Oh good lord, there's so many things to look at. So for my sanity, we're spreading it out nicely. Now, first off, we've got a new Warcry box, Nightmare Quest. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, fine, it's just, it's just more Stormcast and some ghoul lads. Are we really that interested? You should be, because I've already been, not spoiled, but I've seen images, the ghoul lads have got some sort of baboon creature. First up though, we need to look at the Stormcast offering because, I mean, look, I know there's a lot of Stormcast. I know the joke is that they're Sigmarines because they're basically fantasy space marines, but I would suggest that their range is also going the way of the space marines in that it, there's loads of it. It's massively bloated, there's a ton of stuff in there for what is, relatively, an incredibly young faction. We even have exactly the same situation with said space marines where we used to have Firstborn, then we got Primaris, this time round we had one flavour of Stormcast and now we've got a slightly different flavour, with slightly different armor. I mean, I guess if the formula works. Anyway, I love the new armor for the Stormcast. I think it looks way better than the older armor. I just I just think it's really nicely done. So I'm happy to see more. I also much prefer the new weapons that they have. The new weapons look more grounded. We've talked before about them. Maybe not necessarily being realistic, but at least being more believable than the previous lot. And as someone who has a really like like a deep love for like dark fantasy stuff, this just fits way better for that particular aesthetic in my opinion, especially things like the weapons. Like that massive maul hammer thing, that that's ridiculous and it looks great. Armor looks brilliant, I really like the poses that are going on here, the chaplain that isn't a chaplain that I can't remember the name of, Relictor I think it might be. I, I don't know. I, I like the I like the overall look, but I think that the helmet is a little bit goofy. I think it's a bit too cartoony, personally. And the thing is, the rest of the Stormcast stuff, the helmets aren't actually cartoony. They're moulded to be like the shape of the face underneath them, yeah, but that's not the same as being cartoony, and I'm not really sure that that skull helm is is doing that particular model any favours, which is a real pity because I like the rest of it. The rest of it looks really good. That gentleman's greatsword, where he's pointing at the symbol of Sigmar there, on the, uh, the Comet of Sigmar in the blade, that is a quality weapon. I want that on any model. Just all models should come with that sword. That's fantastic. There's just there's just something about this armor. It just it just does it for me. It just absolutely does it for me. I love it. I can't get enough. I do like that helmet as well. That's got like the lion's head coming down over the forehead. That's a cool look. That's interesting. It is just more Stormcast, but to be honest, I like this flavour of Stormcast so much I'm not mad about it. These, however, are the Royal Beast Flayers, and oh my god, I really like the look of this. I really like this. This dude has got someone else's face stapled to his face. That's great. Also, the like use of some sort of creature's arm, like lower arm and hands as what, leg armour? That's so weird and gross. What? Whose idea was that? The arm being replaced with a halberd that is just like rammed through the stump and out the elbow is hardcore. Love that. I'm getting a very like Necron flayed ones uh, feel off the lad on the bottom there. And here's the weird like monkey lads, weird like baboon monkey lads. And if you're thinking, oh, are they really that baboon-like? I put it to you that, yeah, they kind of are. Maybe not a mandrill baboon, but they are still pretty baboon-esque. They're just like nightmare baboons that have got bones sewn into their skin and an entire skeleton sprouting out of their their mane there which is not at all alarming why why does that one have just a full-on like i don't know what part of the body that bone is from but it shouldn't be sticking through his arm what the hell the fact is i just didn't know i needed undead baboon warriors and yet somehow here we are whoever had this idea give them a raise such a weird choice. It's such a weird choice. Why did you do it? Oh, God. Love them. And we've also got some generic lads that, yeah, I mean, they look decent. They look decent. A lot of self-impaling going on here. It's starting to look a little bit dodgy. It's starting to look a little bit dodgy. There's a lot of, like, voluntary sticking of bones through themselves, which that doesn't strike me as healthy behaviour, you know? I do like that guy who's got a skull over his head. He's having a whale of a time. Absolutely loving life, that lad. 
And the fact that he's enjoying himself that much when he's got other people's bones sticking through his leg, I mean, that speaks of a type of job satisfaction that we can we can only ever dream about, frankly. It's a good-looking lot. It's a, Well, it's a good-looking lot. It's nightmarish. It's horrible. Why would you even do it? But I like it. Now, of course, this comes with scenery. I mean, admittedly, some of this scenery does look familiar. I'm pretty sure those trees have been in another box, as have the walkways, which is a bit disappointing if that's the case. They at least look very, very familiar. The, uh, the realm-shaper engine is cool. It is nice. I'm not sure how different the main structure of that is from the, like, just commonly available version, but it does seem to have these platforms added into the box, at least. Obviously, both the warbands are going to end up in AOS proper, and there is a nice little roadmap for Warcry here as well. So we've got Nightmare Quest right now with the Flesh Eater Courts and Stormcast. Then there's going to be a new starter set, hopefully reasonably priced. Four new warbands, two new warbands in autumn and winter, and then, who knows, in spring? Solid 12-month release plan there, though. Now, we also have some Underworlds news. We have Weird Hollow, and this is kind of cool. This is interesting. So, there's a sword. There is a sword made by Nagash called Terminus, and it is accompanied at all times by four spirits, their identities subsumed into nameless roles. One who bears the chopping block, one who sharpens the blade's edge, one who sentences the condemned, and one lucky ghost who gets to wield that big old sword. Conceptually, that is a quality idea, and I love it. I really like that. That's just, that's just fun. There's some really, like, nice, fun storytelling elements in there. I really like that. I also really like the fact that this sword... This sword is just a sword. Like, we've got the executioner right here. We've got the guy holding Terminus. And it just looks normal. It is just a standard blade. It's not covered in runes or carvings. It's not got a ton of, like... Well, there's a bit of, like, sort of soul smoke coming out at the end of it there. But it's not like it's some sort of flaming great sword held aloft. Something that looks absolutely extraordinary and as though it would be wielded by a mighty hero or a condemned person instead it's just a blade it's just a plain two-handed sword and yet it's got this kind of collection of spirits that are just bound to it and manifested by it and are given roles related to it their own identities completely like absorbed that's really cool. It would be easy to make it look over the top and excessive, but they haven't. They really haven't, and I like that a lot. So the Executioner himself looks really cool. I mean, the Nighthorn stuff in general, it's just such a good-looking range. It's, it's kind of hard to mess it up. It's a fantastic range, and I feel like they've done a good job with this guy. This dude with his condemning list is fantastic. I love the fact that they have had him pointing at something. That's actually me reading my list of unbuilt boxes that I need to get around to. It looks great. It looks great. I absolutely love that. That is fantastic. <laughs> I'm like, this This warband is really like, it's really got me. It's really got me. I'm loving this. Little details there with extra scrolls in that kind of carry case. The fact that it has a little carrying case, even though it's a ghost brilliant i'm loving the like battered quill that he's got to write with as well oh so good this lad carrying the i mean it said chopping block but it looks more like an anvil to me i mean i guess you could D did they use anvils for chopping heads off i don't know as if he wasn't weighted down enough as well he's got this kind of like mausoleum crest going over the top it looks like he's got like a really hunched back to uh to have it kind of balance on there i'm loving the candles absolutely I love candles. I love candles on miniatures. I know it's a weird thing to love, but I love it. My armoured company is covered in candles. My... Oh, no, wait, no, I'm not... I'm not going to cut it out, but I'm not going to tell you what the other thing I'm making is that's covered in candles. But suffice to say that candles, love them. These are some cool candles as well. These are some quality candles. That was a tangent. He looks great. And I love that the dude with the, uh, with the, with the whetstone there sharpening the sword, <laughs> he's not... He's just getting some practice in by the look of things, because that is not the same sword the execution is holding. For some reason, I really like the idea that he just he just really wants the, the main sword. He really wants Terminus to be as sharp as possible. So he, like, dives in with his own personal sword that he does keep sharp, but he tries to take as many lives with that because he just can't stand Terminus having a dull edge. Yeah, they've 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 got me with this lot. They've 100% got me. I already love the Nighthorn, and I, I just love, I love, love, love the idea behind this blade. That is so cool. We've once again got a nice little uh, roadmap here as well. So we've got Weird Hollow, which is the core box. That's the one with the uh, with the Stormcast and that amazing Zinch, uh, Zinch Warband as well. Absolutely love that Warband too. 
So we've got the core box, then there's going to be an updated starter set, then in autumn we've got new Chaos Warband, a new core box with two new Warbands. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, for, for Underworlds, I feel like that's that's a decent release rate. Underworlds is really, really popular. Like it's, It does way better than I think most people think it does. And something I really like about Underworlds as a whole is these Warbands that they come out with, because they're so small in number, they seem to put so much more into making them different and unique and like special yeah these are great these are absolutely great love them now we also have a more grunter more grunter is a gigantic version of a gore grunter as you can probably tell by the sheer size and scale of the lad it is absolutely huge <laughs> it's it's really cool I'm not too bothered by the lads on the side there I don't really like the guy on the platform hanging off to one side but you know what? The rest of it is solid. The rest of it is just... I mean, it's a giant angry pig with tusks covered in armour. That is a great idea. I love the blades on said tusks. That looks fantastic. The armour that the Oryx have is, is just so well done. Like, the way it looks like it's very crudely kind of hammered into shape. Seeing something the size of this covered in it is... Ah, oh, it's so good. His little tiny piggy eyes compared to the size of the head. Also, you'll note there's a bit of snot coming out of the nose. Disgusting. Why? Why add that? But, you know, I appreciate the detail at least. The R boy on top looks absolutely great. Also like the fact that he's still got his own weapon slung back there just in case he needs to hack someone's head off. Like I say, I'm not too bothered by the kind of the hanging platform on either side. I don't know that I... I'm not sure that works as well. I would almost prefer it if they were just hanging on for dear life, honestly. I think I'd prefer it if they were just... If they were, like, handholds and footholds on the side of the armour, and if they were hanging off it with a one-handed weapon, as opposed to standing on a platform with a two-handed weapon. Because I feel like one would... Like, the hanging on would denote movement, it would denote speed, it would kind of denote actually having to put some effort into staying on this creature as it hurtled through the enemy and kind of having it so that they're hanging on also makes it look more feasible flat out it just makes it look more more realistic more reasonable more like it could actually be achieved this doesn't look like that like if this thing is moving at any speed he should be falling off that just straight up falling straight off he's just standing there it's the kind of pitfall of putting anything on vehicles really like i used to do it myself when i when i like first started kit bashing tanks and stuff i would have space marines or guys just standing on land raiders or just standing on rhinos and even with space marines with the idea of like maglock boots and whatever it still doesn't look right it still looks like they would just fall off it still looks like it's not actually a good idea it's not something that is kind of sustainable unless the thing is sitting or standing still and not moving anywhere. And I just get the same feeling from this, where the point of contact isn't good enough, the idea that you'll be able to maintain your balance, like, covered in heavy armour, holding a weapon that's bigger than you are, on something that's supposed to be charging flat out through the enemy, I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. So I'd, I'd much prefer it if they were just hanging on somehow. But you know what? If I were to get one of these, I would just end up slicing the arms up doing a bit of green stuff work and getting rid of that platform and going and just you know hoping for the best because I think it would I think it would improve the overall momentum of the model but apart from that apart from that I actually really like it and if you just took that guy off and took the platform off it would still look absolutely solid in fact I think it would look a little bit better so I like it it's just I, I feel like there's things in there that I would change to make it perfect for me personally now to round it out we've got four warriors of grim portent if you say grim portent too quickly, it just sounds like saying grim portent, as though they are both important and grim, which, I, I mean, I guess technically is still true, but it doesn't sound as good. So this is for Dawnbringers, the next chapter in AOS, and the Dawnbringer Crusades are out in force to reconquer the lands lost to chaos. So new campaign called Dawnbringers, and we've got a few new models to kick us off. Starting with the Harbinger of Decay, and this is brilliant, and I love it, and I have no further notes. No, seriously, no, I've got no, I've got nothing else for you. This is perfect. I have no criticisms whatsoever. The only thing, the only thing that I could possibly say that I'm not sure about on this model is the bell hanging off the stick, but there's a scythe option, so that's irrelevant. The only other thing would be that I'm maybe not a big fan of the horns 
on that helmet, but then there's a chainmail over the face option with a single horn coming out of the top, which looks amazing, so that doesn't matter either. This, this is, this is an 11 out of 10. I love every detail on this thing. This is grim, it's nasty, it's dark, it's so nicely done, like, the disease and the boils across the horse's flesh is really, really nicely sculpted. There's a distinct lack of hilarious nurglings jumping off the horse, which I really like. Even the raven on the back looks rough AF. The hunched posture of the rider is fantastic. The fact that he doesn't look like battle ready, like he's just traveling, I love that. I absolutely love that. There's no hint of like heroic anything here. There's no hint of like preparing to ride into battle. This is just, this just looks like something that moves from place to place and everywhere it goes, death and decay follows. I love it. Absolutely nailed it on this one. Absolutely nailed it. This might be, genuinely, this might be the highlight for me. Of, the, of all the AOS stuff shown, this model might well be the highlight. It is so, so good. We also have Sir Gerion, who is a Marrow Scroll Herald, <laughs> which is quite the name. Pretty gross, pretty disgusting. I think he's got more than enough bones there, and he's clearly been collecting others. Oh, just holding like a rib and a half in one hand. It's so, it's so bad. Also, this, like, the flayed arm... There's no bones in that arm. Look at it, it's just all flappy skin. Gross. And since he's in the Flesh Eater Courts, he's going to be running alongside the, uh, the the undead baboons. So that's <laughs> that's a nice image to, to go to go home with, isn't it? Jesus. He's good, but the Harbinger is just, I mean, still, it's it's still at the top. We also have Fury, for Jory, Fury, uh, however, F-J-O-R-I. How do you want to pronounce that? You knock yourself out. Grimhold Exile, and clearly a fire slayer. Now on the plus side, you can easily tell he's a fire slayer. He's got the hammers, he's got the fire, he's got no clothes on, so easy to identify. On the downside, it also means that he looks exactly like every other fire slayer because that range consists entirely of clones of this dude and that's it. It's a very double-edged sword, the fire slayer's range. Like on the one hand, if you like painting half-naked dudes with giant weapons who all have the same hair colour, then you are absolutely golden. If you don't like that, that's a real shame, because you've only got one other thing that isn't that. And even that other thing has got one of them riding it. So, and finally, we've got a charming little gobbo called Braggit Big Talker. <laughs> it's got an amazing name. <laughs> Love the name. It's a little, it's a little f swarm of flying squigs. What the hell? Wearing a... It looked like an oryx head as, as a hat. Well, an oryx skull as a hat. What the hell is this? I mean, it's... It's very Gloom Spike Gits. It's amazing, but also Jesus Christ. Looks properly devious and uh, <laughs> devious and like he's going to con you out of all your money, doesn't he? Love the mushrooms sprouting out of the back of him. That's fantastic. He's got his moon sickle and his cudgel. They all look great as well. I mean, Jesus Christ. There's so much character. There's so much character in the Gloom Spike Gits range. It's fantastic. Now, it looks like each of those are going to be leading a regiment of renown, so for Big Talker, we've got the, we've got a bunch of squig riders by the look of it, some of the little mage lads, the horrible gobbo mage lads, some more squigs as well, um, Firestar, <laughs> as if you needed me to bring up an example of how all the Fire Slayers range, they all just look identical. There you go. There you go. You didn't need to see it, but you've seen it nonetheless. If anyone was sat there going, actually, you're being unfair about the Fire Slayers, there's a lot of variety in that range. I mean, firstly, get your eyes checked, and secondly, I put to you Exhibit A. There's also the Flesh Eater Quartz one, which, admittedly, having just said that the Fire Slayers don't have much going on in terms of diversity of range, I mean, the Flesh Eater Quartz aren't that far off, but they do have, like, bigger and smaller versions. They've got little ghouls, they've got big ghouls, they've got flying ghouls, they've got weird bone collecting ghouls they've also got baboon ghouls now so you know there's a fair amount going on there's an excellent use of some uh, some corpse cart pieces to make a tree with some dudes in it in that picture as well lovely and finally we've got the harbinger and i mean that actually oh that box it that's horribly tempting that is horribly tempting i love all of those models they're all great oh oh dear oh no I've got to say, I think he's taken it. I think this one is taking it for me. 
This is the one I want. Of all the AOS stuff. Of all the AOS stuff. This is this has really grabbed me. Really grabbed me. And it's been a fairly strong showing. Like that Underworld's Warband, admittedly, that's got me too. That's got me too. But this is I, I like I wanna paint this right now. I wanna paint it this instance. Like right now. That is just Oh, it's so good. The question is, is there anything in there that tickled your fancy? Anything that stood out as being particularly marvellous to your eye? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget we're going to cover the rest of this stuff tomorrow, so come back for that. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. As always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands, and I will see you for the next one. <laughs>